Hello, I'm Chris Packham, and on my travels filming for the BBC Springwatch, I've been very fortunate to experience some fantastic stretches of the UK coastline, including these here in Cornwall. Now, the Cornish Wildlife Trust Your Shore project has been working really hard with some dedicated volunteers to enhance everyone's appreciation of this fragile and unique environment. Here are a few of the things that they've been up to. Well, today we're in Foy and we're joined by 18 students from a local primary school to run a seashore safari. This will give them a chance to explore and discover the marine environment that is right on their doorstep. And that's something that a lot of these children have never done before. <laughs> Welcome everyone. My name's Abby. I am one of the marine conservation officers at the Cornwall Wildlife Trust. So what do we have to look after in Cornwall? It's not the just about sea. the trees and the ridge, the sea. Yeah, hands up here. Who likes to use the sea? Go swimming in the sea. Like who likes to go uh, snorkeling? Yeah. Somebody snorkel here. Or like rock pooling. Excellent. Now I'm running a project that is looking at these really special areas of coastline. And they're called Voluntary Marine Conservation Areas. And you've got one here in Foy. It's got amazing plants, amazing animals, amazing habitats, and you need to protect it. On a day like this, running a seashore safari, you're trying to do a few things. For a start, you're trying to just get the children out of the classroom, down to their local rocky shore, and explore it. Make them realise just how fantastic it is, how exciting it is, how just it's just wonderful. And you know they're going to enjoy themselves. You know a huge proportion of these children children don't come and do activities like this on the beach even though they only live maybe a mile or two in land you know they may not be fortunate enough to be able to come down to the beach that often and really explore it first thing i'm going to get you to do a shell scavenger hunt it is a competition start searching go 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 <laughs> Okay, and then what type of shell is that? Crab. Okay, this is your common shore crab. Because if we look at the shape of its shell, it's always kind of like this brownie green colour. Yeah. Okay, but there it's eyes, that's the case of its eyes. And then and it, how many points does it have either side of its eye? Five. 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 Five points either side. In fact, do you know what? I know that this isn't actually a dead crab. This is actually the shell of a crab that is molted. It, it means it's going out of its shell. It has. It's, it's got bigger. How is it dead if it's not? Well, it's not. So, it, so technically, it's, this one isn't from a dead crab. This is from a molted crab. Hey, you're going to get loads of them. That's a lovely oyster shell. Well done, guys. Oh, yeah, and do you remember what those ones are called? Top shells. It touches them. What type of top shell are they? Purple, yeah. Purple yeah. top shells. Like that. Right, okay. We need to see who the winners are. And the way we're going to do that is we need to sort what you have found. So you're going to go in your groups again in a second and you're going to find a clear patch of sand. And in that sand, I want you to draw yourself a square. The second thing really is to make teachers realise that it's not that scary to take your children down to a local spot, get them out of the classroom and use the environment to hit their curricular links. That one's going round and that one's going up. Oh yeah. So where's that going to go? Is I that the same? Think, so we want to give teachers the confidence and the skills through the work that we do, the seashore safaris we run, the training that we will provide. We want to give them the skills so that they can, in the future, next year, come and do this job and bring them down here and, and, and do it all over again. Four, three, two, one. All right, can everyone gather over time? It's now up. This is a fab, fab grid. Have we noticed, I've been talking to some of you about where these animals come from. Do they all come from the beach and the sand? No. No, no. where are they coming from, a lot of them? Yeah. Or particularly, what habitat do they like? The rocky shore habitat, exactly. Fantastic, you've got all these shells. They've got great hard casing around their body and these will live under the sand. Under the sand, they'll live deep down in the sand, okay? This is a classic. What's this one? Cockle, cockle, cockle. Okay, nice deep ridges in the shell. You cannot mistake cockles. Okay, next grid, quickly. That one up there. 
Okay, classic. I'm sure you all found these. Brilliant. Classic limpet. Everyone say limpet. You should all know what a limpet is by the end of today. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, oh, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Round of fourteen, fifteen. All right, eighteen in the sand for the girls. So, when we go rock pawling this afternoon, will creatures just be sat there waving at you? We're going, hiya, pick me up. They're going to be hiding. They're going to be hiding, brilliant. Why are they hiding? They don't want to get They don't want anybody to eat them. They don't want anyone to eat them. They don't want predators to find them. What about what's blowing in my hair today? If you're a wet, slimy, cold marine creature, the water disappears, you don't want to dry out, and sometimes on a hot, sunny day, do you want to be in the sun? No. No. So it is so important that every single one of us looks after that rocky shore and we look after everything and we put everything back where we found it so that we can come back here and rock pool next summer. Okay, that's enough talking. Yes! Oh, should we, should we sit here a bit longer? No. Yeah, or should we just get... No. Okay. No. incredible well done that's a cushion starfish so that's different from those other common starfish we've been finding so it's still got five arms but it's uh, much smaller i mean that's generally almost as big as they're going to get and they've got really short squat arms around the outside okay so it looks like a big fat cushion cushion starfish oh, all right well done that's brilliant i got a black crab i got a black one too oh my god oh wow Where? Where? okay now this is a prawn okay we'll just gently Put him onto your arms there. So he's got stripy legs, so we know he's a prawn. And then he'll move by flapping his tail and he moves backwards. He propels himself backwards. Can and we eat it? You, you could. We're not going to today. We're going to put everything back where we found it. Okay, should I put him back? Right, let's have a look. What have we found? That is incredible. I'll be back in about 10 minutes. We haven't found one of these yet today. Now, can you see what the sea urchin has done? It's on a bit of seaweed. No, the urchin here uses those sucker tube feet to pull the seaweed up onto its body to try and camouflage itself. And where did you find it? Do you find it underneath a rock by yeah. any chance? Yeah, they really like underneath seaweedy rocks. They pick seaweed off the, off the rocks with their little teeth there. And that's a really good find. Well done. That's it, gently in. We'll put that back where we found it later. <laughs> Thank you, that's made my day. <laughs> The Cornwall Wildlife Trust continues to inform, educate and enthuse about the fantastic wild environment here in Cornwall, but they do need your support. You can log on at www.cornwallwildlifetrust.org.uk and find out all about it and hopefully join in with them. And the next time you visit a Cornish beach like this one, look out for the Your Shore project. Mm -hmm.